Today we have a pleasure of meeting a personality who has been doing a community service over 30 years through various organizations, associations and groups in Calgary, none other than Teresa Wu Pao. Teresa, welcome to Asian Magazine. Well, thank you very much for having me, Jatar. Okay. Uh, Teresa, as uh, my uh, very general question to uh, everyone, tell us about yourself briefly. Okay. Um, I came to uh, Canada in 1972 with my family, yeah. uh, brothers, two sisters, and my parents. Uh, so we were here uh, for family reunification. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I uh, started um, uh, middle junior high in Canada and went on to uh, have the opportunity to study social work. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was involved in community service for over, over 30 years. And, uh, and very, very much see uh, my public service in government and ex as an extension of my community work. Mm -hmm. So you started community service very early age. Yes, yes, true. <laughs> I started volunteering in my teenage years right. and, uh, and started the, the first organization in my 20s. I see. And uh, when, I, when I was home with my three children, mm -hmm. three young children, mm -hmm. and I went on to start, um, uh, you know, for a total of six organizations. Right, yes, yes. Okay. And uh, because as an immigrant, I learned that um, uh, Canada is a, is a country with a really well-developed uh, social service system. Mm -hmm. However, uh, still a lot of people were not able to benefit from this system. Right. So that was part of the reason I wanted to study social work so mm -hmm. that I can help people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be able to access the kind of support and services they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as you mentioned, you had a... Um, uh, a desire to serve people mm -hmm. and you have served on uh, several boards in Calgary mm -hmm. and tell me about your experience. Well uh, for a lot of those um, uh, opportunities mm -hmm. uh, my involvement mm -hmm. uh, they were great learning opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, serving with the United Way I was exposed to a very wide range of community and social services mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, when I was involved with the United Way uh, that was during the time when Calgary's um, uh, become was becoming even more uh, diverse so there was um, a greater awareness uh, about the need for our community uh, social services mm -hmm. to have the capacity to serve a diverse population mm -hmm. because for a long time they were mm -hmm. serving people primarily of Euro Canadian background but now our you know uh, Calgary is one of the the most ethnically racially diverse cities uh, in the country yes. so uh, so accordingly our institutions and our service agencies have also have to modify mm -hmm. and be able to serve a mm -hmm. diverse population. So, so I, I was in United Way during that time. Mm -hmm. So I was very pleased that I had, I had the opportunity to learn uh, about what other regions have done, have put in place, and what we need to do as a growing community. Um, so uh, the health region was, um, uh, of course, a, a very key institution. And uh, so I had the opportunity to look at some of the, the um, the needs of diverse community within the health sector, such as interpreters, mm -hmm. uh, such as uh, ensuring that people understand the kind of treatment and give proper consent mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to, to treatment, uh, as well as the opportunity to look at um, different um, healing and, uh, and health uh, you know, treatments. Uh, so I think we still have a, a lot to do. Right. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of looking at integrating different kind of health beliefs and practices mm -hmm. so that people feel more at home in the health system. Mm -hmm. So they were great learning opportunities, exposed me to, you know, um, uh, diverse sectors. Uh, mm -hmm. You also started a uh, uh, number of organizations or mm -hmm. associations mm -hmm. uh, based on that. Yeah. Uh, tell me about them. Okay, um, well I started where um, I felt uh, more comfortable and uh, so I started with the, the Chinese community because of my ethnic background. So because of my social work uh, training, so I started the Calgary Chinese Community Service Association and uh, you know started with uh, working with the Calgary Immigrant Women Association mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, pr provide some support uh, uh, programs uh, to, uh, to women, immigrant women. Mm -hmm. uh, I organized Boy Scouts and Girl Guys. Right. I organized after school programs mm -hmm. and then I, I, like many other organizations, mm -hmm. I went on to try to get some um, uh, access, some funding mm -hmm. to continue to work and that's when I ran, uh, learned that a lot of our institutions uh, 
were not very diverse. Right. And, uh, and, and at that time, I also actually had the opportunity to work with uh, other organizations mm -hmm. like the Council of Sikh Organizations. This right. is in the early 90s. Right. So I realized that both the, the Council of Sikh Organizations mm -hmm. and, uh, and myself tried to actually went to the city of Calgary to access some funding mm -hmm. to help women. And we were not successful. Right. So after a while we decided maybe we should work together. Right. So we did. Okay. And, uh, and that led to um, uh, the, uh, a tri-community project right. uh, between the Chinese, the Sikh and the Vietnamese community. Right. And uh, we uh, tried to uh, uh, help people to have access to computers, mm -hmm. to have access to information about different services, mm -hmm. to work with different agencies to help mm -hmm. them understand the needs of diverse communities. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, eventually, uh, I founded the Ethnocultural Council of Calgary. Mm -hmm. And the objective of the Ethnocultural Council of Calgary is to, um, to have immigrant populations and minority groups to look at some of the common issues and concerns, such as employment. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be uh, uh, education. It could be um, addressing issues of discrimination. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the common issues they face. And right. how, how can these groups uh, work together to influence policies and uh, to address some of these common issues and concerns through a collaborative and collective way. Right. So that was the, um, the Ethnocultural Council. Mm -hmm. And then I also, uh, another organization I started was the Asian Heritage um, Foundation, right. and, uh, which was to work with many different Asian groups in Calgary mm -hmm. to organize Asian Heritage Month events. Right. So each May in Canada is, May, uh, is Asian Heritage Month. Okay. So, and that's an opportunity to help Canadians of all backgrounds right. to gain a better understanding, awareness, and appreciation for the participation mm -hmm. and the contribution of Asian Canadians. Oh, so, nice. uh, so working together with the South Asian community, the Korean, and many other groups, we organize some um, concerts with right. the Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm -hmm. We brought the uh, um, writers uh, and artists mm -hmm. and comedians mm -hmm. of different Asian Canadian background to right. come to Calgary to talk, to show their art, to show their talent, mm -hmm. but to also um, uh, proof, uh, to, to uh, profile uh, the different uh, Asian Canadians participation and contribution. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so I really appreciated the opportunity to try right. different things mm -hmm. and, uh, and bring some, um, you know, nice programs to, to the Calgary audience, right. but in the process also raise awareness. Right, that's good, <laughs> good, good, good job. And uh, I'm sure you enjoyed at the same time when you were doing all that work. Mm -hmm. Were you uh, part of also uh, Alberta Wild Rose Foundation? Yes, I was. And of course, um, uh, that was the part of the government's foundation, mm -hmm. one of the uh, groups, uh, foundation that we provide funding mm -hmm. to support uh, community initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, some of our international programs. So I remember when I was uh, sitting on the grant committee, mm -hmm. uh, we actually provided some uh, funding to build schools in India, mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, address um, health issues in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud that uh, Alberta is one of the few provincial governments that have such a, a program. Uh, you ran for um, uh, public school board mm -hmm. trustee yes. for Ward 3 and 4. That's right. Uh, how was your experience like? Well, um, it, was a, it was a great learning uh, experience yeah. because by that time, uh, after you know, uh, many years of community service, which I really enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, working with people, but um, I also realized that um, uh, running for public office uh, give people the opportunity uh, to influence policies which will impact a large number of people. Mm -hmm. So you have the opportunity, the potential mm -hmm. to make some positive change mm -hmm. you know, to, to society and to a large group of people. So that's why I ran for a school board yeah, I because see. I became very involved mm -hmm. and, and concerned right. uh, at that time mm -hmm. about the cutting of mm -hmm. the English second language funding. Mm -hmm. So uh, back in the early 90s, when a lot of people started coming to Calgary and the school system identified the need uh, for diversity and, and more English support to the students, mm -hmm. they cut um, uh, the budget by 50 percent. Really? So yeah, so that, that was when I decided to run for uh, school board. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, 
you know, I mean, they're part of it that's not easy. And then the other part that's very rewarding because working with children uh, is very rewarding. And, uh, and also, um, given my background, uh, that people feel that they have a, a, a voice. Uh, they can call somebody mm -hmm. and uh, that I would listen to them and often understand, you know, the experience and the issues and mm -hmm. then bring it to the decision making table. Right. Uh, so that was very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, you know, public education is very important. Right. Uh, and because it's such an opportunity to help um, create a better future for a lot of people mm -hmm. and it's been considered an equalizer right right uh, so so I, I really appreciated the opportunity to serve and uh, and act and also introduce me to politics uh, Teresa as you uh, have done a lot of community service and mm -hmm. you ran for the uh, Calgary School Board's trustee and uh, what made you uh, jump to uh, uh, for uh, MLA's uh, elections mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, building on my recognition that um, you know the importance of shaping policies, influencing policies, which can impact uh, you know a large number of people, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that um, I was involved with the Ethnocultural Council, and uh, because the, the council is about um, encouraging more people to participate actively mm -hmm. in in our public institutions. Mm -hmm. So uh, when a very long term uh, MLA uh, in my riding decided not to run. Right. So I thought, well, uh, and then people started talking to me right. uh, about running. Right. And uh, so that was really the first time I started thinking about running for provincial politics okay. was when that opening, uh, you know, happened. Yeah. And then people said, well, you know, you, you, you've been working on encouraging people to, right. to, uh, to participate uh, in, 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 in office. And so I decided to jump in uh -huh. five weeks before nomination in okay. 2007. And uh, with the help of many, many people in the community right. uh, that I've uh, come to know over the past 30 years, helping me, supporting mm -hmm. me. So I was able to win the nomination mm -hmm. uh, in 2007 and went on uh, to win the, uh, the provincial election in 2008. Uh, yeah. So I was elected to the province uh, provincial government in 2008. In 2008, yeah. yes, that's the 2008. You were elected from... Uh, Calgary McKay at the that's time. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. it's the Calgary Northern Hills. That's right, that's right. correct. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so, how, what sort of difference uh, you felt uh, you've been doing from the, your community service mm. to and uh, member of legislative mm -hmm. assembly? Mm -hmm. What was a big jump or big difference, mm -hmm. or it's the same thing? Well, actually, um, uh, even though I see it as an extension, there's a big difference. Yes. And the, the, the nature of the work is different. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, as a representative of the people of my riding in the provincial government, uh, I have to remain connected to the people. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the, um, you know, the, the, the similarity you know, with my previous uh, role. Mm -hmm. However, um, as an MLA, we have many different roles. One is as a legislator. And uh, so we are involved in uh, the development and passing of legislation or mm -hmm. laws, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so one of the um, um, fairly recent law that we passed in, in, in Alberta is, say, the drunk driving law. Right. So we were involved in that, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, the budget, mm -hmm. uh, which is very, very important uh, yes. uh, 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 piece of uh, uh, legislation that we work on on mm -hmm. an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as uh, MLAs, we all engage in learning about the uh, the proposed legislation. We participate in uh, discussion and debate, mm -hmm. and then uh, amongst ourselves, we have a big tent party right. and the caucus mm. and then also uh, with the opposition in the um, in the chamber right. uh, and then you go through the the, the process of uh, debating and uh, and then you pass the law mm -hmm. um, and uh, so uh, so first we're representative for the people and then we are also um, uh, lawmakers right. and uh, so uh, and the other is um, uh, we also um, have an opportunity to bring some of our um, uh, constituency specific or personal uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. interest areas mm -hmm. uh, so we c we have the opportunity say uh, to introduce uh, private member bills mm -hmm. or motions right and uh, um, so so you can you also work on things that you have a uh, experience or passion right, right. and uh, so um, and also as the associate minister 
currently uh, for uh, Asia Pacific relations, right. I have added responsibility mm -hmm. uh, as the um, uh, the social minister. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that role, uh, I also uh, I so I work um, closely mm -hmm. um, with the uh, Ministry of International Intergovernmental Relations, mm -hmm. and um, and I report to the Premier because right. Premier is now the Minister for International Relations. Oh really? Yeah. And uh, um, so, um, uh, so I would, uh, um, you know, uh, tr try to strengthen our relationships uh, with the Asia Pacific regions, uh, whether it's working with the ambassadors, the council generals, mm -hmm. or high commissioners, mm -hmm. and uh, and also working with the different sectors, mm -hmm. because our, uh, Alberta is very blessed right. that uh, uh, we are an, an exporting province. Mm -hmm. We have a tremendous reserve of. Um, oil and gas, mm -hmm. but we are also a major agriculture, agri-food uh, producer mm -hmm. uh, with uh, great potential to export even more, you right. know, to the world and to the Asia region. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have a forestry industry mm -hmm. that's very strong mm -hmm. and there's lots of interest, uh, interest in the developing world uh, for uh, uh, fiber, for wood product. Mm -hmm. And then we also, people are also very interested in our educational services, mm -hmm. uh, on our environmental services, and, uh, and energy services. Right. And uh, so we have a lot to offer to the world, mm -hmm. and tourism is another area. Okay. So I have, um, in my role, I have to learn agriculture, I have to learn tourism, I have to learn education. Mm -hmm. So uh, a great exposure to mm -hmm. different, um, very important sectors. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, part of the relationship building is through our missions. So from time to time, I would have um, uh, to work with um, you know the different colleagues mm -hmm. and uh, and represent the people in the government of Alberta on missions. Mm -hmm. So there are ma many facets to uh, to my role as an MLA. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, uh, the, it's the perception uh, or people say that mm -hmm. uh, you know. MLAs or politicians, uh, I should say politician, we see only at the time of uh, elections mm. or re-elections mm -hmm. and before or after they just disappear. Mm. Uh, what's your views on it? Well, um, well, in my case it's not true mm -hmm. and I don't think that it's true for most of my colleagues. Uh, but maybe uh, the media is not, you know, they, they don't sort of report on uh, some of the more positive and quiet things that we do, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so speaking for myself, mm -hmm. uh, I try to attend uh, a lot of community events, mm -hmm. um, and uh, because um, that is uh, one of the ways to connect to people, to listen to people's concerns, mm -hmm. and um, um, and then actually personally, I door knock all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to do more, but um, but I do. Uh, I don't only door knock during election time. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, um, and I actually, we know many of us, we, we try to organize town halls. Mm -hmm. We try to have uh, coffee with the MLA. Mm -hmm. um, like in my riding of Northern Hills, I only have 7% seniors. So I have a lot of young families, right. and uh, and they're very busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's uh, it's not easy to get them out to a town hall. Mm -hmm. So I have to try to find different means to go talk to people. Mm -hmm. uh, but just this morning, I was at the school, so I had the chance to talk to the teachers and principal and and the students, mm -hmm. and um, and I uh, sometimes go to um, uh, parent council meetings. And, uh, and also, I work very closely mm -hmm. with the uh, community associations. Mm -hmm. So, uh, especially uh, in my case, the past six years, I've been working on a multi-purpose center right. uh, for the north central area. Mm -hmm. uh, because, um, you know, it is a fast growing area, mm -hmm. Panorama Hills, Country Hills area. And uh, we don't have any community association building. Mm -hmm. We don't have any um, uh, baby clinic. Right. We don't have any place for youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have any place for seniors. And we don't have any community social services. And we don't have a high school, public high school. Yeah. So we have lots of work to do. Uh, seniors from the Sikh community right. came to talk to me a couple of years ago uh -huh. to tell me that they don't have a place to meet. Because okay. they like to get together, and it's a long way to travel back mm -hmm. to the northeast. Right. So, um, so I, what I was able to do was to help them to have a, a room mm -hmm. uh, within the library mm -hmm. in Country Hills to meet every Friday. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think there's more that needs to be done mm -hmm. 
uh, and I, I wish I can do more, but we're working on it. We're working on that multi-purpose center. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you are. You have lots, lo lots to do. Yes. Lots to do. <laughs> Teresa, as an MLA, what's your la latest uh, private member's bill? Mm -hmm. What do you have presented? Right. Well, I was appointed to cabinet two years ago. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the last um, private member motion I brought forward was uh, uh, before 2012. And uh, so I had the opportunity to bring uh, forward uh, two um, private member motions that was actually debated, mm -hmm. uh, uh, went through the full uh, uh, preparation phase. Mm -hmm. So the first one was uh, to urge the government to um, uh, implement the um, Alberta uh, Voluntary Nonprofit um, um, uh, Implementation Plan, mm -hmm. so um, action plan. So that was my very first one. And, uh, and then the second one was, was to urge the government of Alberta to, um, to look at, uh, to evaluate and, and uh, actually institute uh, cultural competency mm -hmm. in our government mm -hmm. so that um, our government and the people in, in, in government will have the competency to review the, the, uh, their understanding and uh, of the, the cultural diversity in our province and make sure that the way we interface with communities, we, the way we develop policies, mm -hmm. program services, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, with the understanding of, of cultural diversity. So that was uh, one of the, the uh, private member motions that I brought forward well, as good. an MLA. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. Uh, now, um, what's your views on uh, the current uh, economic situations in mm -hmm. Alberta? Well, thank you very much for that question because uh, it's uh, very much on the minds of probably every single MLAs, right. and uh, because uh, we know that um, the the situation um, uh, is serious, uh, we are looking at the potential uh, potential deficit of um, uh, seven billion dollars. So we will be short uh, potentially of uh, sev up to seven billion dollars. So that's the uh, oil based revenues. Yes, that's right. So um, that means that um, it will hugely impact mm -hmm. uh, the um, level of uh, pr uh, government program mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, you know, uh, and, and, and public service sector. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, you know, the way that the economists mm -hmm. uh, are projecting the, the problem is that this, is, this may not be short term. Mm -hmm. So it may last. Uh, for a year, two or three, mm -hmm. so it's going to have a cumulative uh, effect, and uh, and we really have uh, as the province, uh, we, you know, whether it's, it's oil companies or other sectors, they have they, they're tied to the the energy sector. Mm -hmm. So I think there would be some ripple effect mm -hmm. to uh, people beyond the oil sector. Mm -hmm. So it um, so it, it is um, uh, of grave concern uh, for the provincial government mm -hmm. uh, because also um, uh, you know as a fiscally responsible government and also as Albertans we want to be fiscally prudent. Right. And uh, so we don't want to carry debts that will impact our children and grandchildren right. uh, in, in, into the future. So we have to take a balanced approach. Mm -hmm. So what the Premier Prentice uh, have been um, uh, engaging in conversation with uh, Albertans and people outside of Alberta is that uh, we need to, um, to look at um, um, possibly, quite possibly, uh, cutting spending. Right. So we have to, to take the responsibility mm -hmm. to look at how we can um, uh, uh, find greater effic uh, efficiency in cut spending. And uh, the other is uh, different ways to raise revenue. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, generate revenue. Mm -hmm. And then the, the third is uh, we are also very fortunate and we have been prudent uh, to have a contingency fund. Mm -hmm. It's not the heritage uh, savings mm -hmm. fund, it's the contingency fund. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so this is the time for us to actually uh, use uh, the contingency fund mm -hmm. to create the, you know, uh, that balanced approach to address this crisis. Right. While we're on the same subject, uh, Premier Printers announced uh, that uh, all the MLAs voluntarily will take 5% cut in the uh, wages. Mm -hmm. What do you think is enough or you need to <laughs> done more? Okay. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, cutting spending, um, so we are looking at, um, we're already um, restricting professional development 
uh, you know, programs for public um, uh, servants. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking at substantially different ways to, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis in each office, uh, ways to, to um, uh, uh, conserve, you know, uh, like uh, we don't print uh, material in color anymore. Uh, we really urge people to 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 print double sided. We mm -hmm. we got those directive from the minister of finance. Right. So I think I think those are very good practices to mm -hmm. put in place. Uh, but uh, at, at we know we have to look at larger scale. So mm -hmm. um, um, so w there will be possibly cutting of um, um, some programs. Mm -hmm. So we have to to really determine what are core programs that we must. Uh, uh, carry on, carry on, and then others that we have to find different ways to deliver those mm -hmm. programs and services. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, uh, first of all, uh, Premier and Cabinet um, uh, set the example by cutting our own salary by five percent, mm -hmm. and then uh, the rest of the MLA they uh, at the committee uh, meeting last week they also uh, uh, follow suit and and cut. MLA salary by 5%. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, everything is relative. So some people say it's, it's, uh, it's a good start and some people say it's not enough. But what I do remember was I was elected in 2008. Right. And uh, shortly after I was elected, we froze our, uh, <laughs> our salary. Uh -huh. and, then, um, and then it was eva evaluated by a judge and then we, we, uh, we removed the, the, uh, the severance pay. Uh, the Alberta MLAs nev don't have pension, uh, so so we have been making different changes over the, the past six seven years. So um, so I I I um, I, build, I hope uh, you know what we're doing is reasonable and we're mm -hmm. setting a good example for mm -hmm. us to look at what else we need to do to cut spending. Mm -hmm. Teresa, uh, as uh far as I know, the Alberta was used to be a very rich province in Canada. And at one time, we were used to have over uh, $20 billion uh, as a saving and heritage funds. Now, Alberta is going to de deficit. Our revenue is down, and, uh, but we're still in an excellent position financially. Uh, there are many jurisdictions in North America on this continent uh, uh, that is, um, uh, have the ability to enjoy what we have. Mm -hmm. You know, we have you know, we have had mostly balanced budget. Uh, we only borrow to, uh, to, uh, for capital projects. Uh, we have never borrowed for, we have not borrowed for operation. So, uh, so we always have a balanced budget for mm -hmm. our operation. Mm -hmm. But because we are a fast growing province, mm -hmm. we have been welcoming uh, 100,000 people mm -hmm. uh, to Alberta each year for 10 years. So we added a million people mm -hmm. to the province, more than a million in the past 10 years. Right. And uh, so they don't bring schools with them. They don't bring seniors' homes or roads and, and highways with them. Mm -hmm. so, um, so with that kind of growth, we have to, to, uh, to, to really address infrastructure needs mm -hmm. as well as maintenance needs. Mm -hmm. So the area that we borrow money for is capital projects. Mm -hmm. We will be, uh, probably face some challenging time uh, you know, financially for the next two to three years. But, um, uh, you know, within a, a short period of time, we'll be back in the, in the black. And at that time, then we will start to save and also pay down the, uh, the money we borrowed to build schools and, and highways. Mm -hmm. Theresa, as um, Alberta is the only province which does not have a mm -hmm. provincial sales tax, PST, mm -hmm. uh, you think it's going to keep on following the tradition? Mm -hmm. Well, Premier is inviting the public yeah. to provide their input and their, their thoughts you know, on the issue as to how we're going to generate some additional revenue because um, not only to generate revenue to address the current uh, uh, financial difficulty, but in the long run, we really have to find more sustainable ways mm -hmm. to, you know, to um, uh, uh, support the, the kind of quality of life that mm -hmm. the Albertans come to expect and uh, to continue to, uh, you know, to grow and develop the province. Mm -hmm. So we need to become uh, really, truly uh, have a, a more diversified economy. Mm -hmm. We need to have a greater market access mm -hmm. and we also have to really reduce our, our uh, reliance mm -hmm. on just the, the energy uh, revenue. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, so at this is a, 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 an opportune time 
for us as a province to look at how we're going to do that, you know, mm -hmm. find the most sustainable way uh, to, um, to, to, um, to support the province. So Pro uh, Premier is inviting the public to provide input mm -hmm. on, on the different ways to uh, generate revenue. So uh, sales tax is one way. Right. And uh, so we do have a, a flat tax, 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, which we intend to keep our province at the, at the, you know, the lowest um, uh, uh, tax rate. Mm -hmm. However, the difference between uh, what we currently collect uh, uh, from the the ten percent tax and the next lowest uh, tax, uh, you know, region mm -hmm. is eleven billion dollars. So um, we also we are paying the highest uh, wages in the country. Right. So um, so I think that uh, it is time for us to look at uh, how we can bring that uh, differential between uh, our uh, tax collection and the next lowest. Uh, but remain to be the you know the most um, uh, mm -hmm. favorable mm -hmm. tax region for okay. for people to do business, mm -hmm. to live and raise a family. Right, Teresa, what's your views on uh, on dropping all prices? Mm. Well, um, it's a reality that uh, we have to face. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a major um, uh, energy exporting province, mm -hmm. uh, it. Unfortunately, it's not something that we have a whole lot of control over. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not create this situation, but we, we have to uh, find solutions to, to respond to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but the, at the same time, uh, looking at the demand and supply scenario, mm -hmm. and the demand is not gone down. No. Nope. Uh, all in, all the throughout the world, mm -hmm. every industry is moving around and every mm -hmm. country is moving mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. So demand is there mm -hmm. and supply is there mm -hmm. and meeting, but a drop in all prices, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, uh, but such is the situation we, we find ourselves in. So, um, uh, so I think um, uh, we just have to, uh, like in, in, in the past number of years, we just have to be resilient and uh and and you know live through this mm -hmm. uh and uh, the most important thing is uh, our government and our premier have a plan and uh so we'll be unveiling that plan uh you know the details of that plan mm -hmm. uh you know very soon but uh, we do have a plan i right. think that's what's important uh we need to find more predictable sustainable way to handle our finances mm -hmm. so that we don't go through this roller coaster mm -hmm. you know every number of years so I think that's what we need to do now. Right. Uh, so in your opinion, this, the oil slump, so to speak, how long is it going to last? <laughs> well, I'm not an economist and I'm not a, you know, a fortune teller. So I, uh, but anyways, um, uh, we believe, because uh, the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. and the Premier have been speaking to um, uh, a good number of economists top economists in, in the country mm -hmm. in preparation for our next budget. So, um, so we have been informed that uh, it is not going to be short term. So it will be here for, for a little while. Yes, it will be here for longer term. Uh, now I think we change the subject to come into the sort of politics side of mm -hmm. it. Uh, as in recent months, uh, there has been a, a shift. Uh, an opposition party leader and mm -hmm. some of uh, the opposition party members have crossed the floor. Uh, how does it impact on uh, sitting government of Alberta or the other party and mm. to the public? Well, um, because it, it happened, uh, you know, uh, just right before the winter break. And uh, so we, we've had a few meetings, uh, uh, you know, uh, over the last little while. Uh, and I think, first of all, I think um, the, the, the members who have decided to join our party uh, must have, um, uh, I think, you know, thought through the process and uh, believe that um, uh, our premier is the kind of leader that they want to serve under, uh, that uh, there's certain uh, shared value right. uh, between, you know, uh, their belief and uh, what the Progressive Conservative Party mm -hmm. uh, holds as, as principles. And um, so um, I think the next step is for us to, to make our best effort to work together as, as, uh, as a caucus. Mm -hmm. 
feedback you have from the, what do you hear from the public? Uh, that public, so to speak, they choose the leader and choose the, their representative on the values, on the party values. Uh, and when this happens, how did the public react to it? Mm -hmm. um, I think to be very honest, I didn't know what to expect. So I've been <laughs> reading, I've been following, uh, you know, uh, on, on the subject. Um, uh, I think that uh, it has uh, caused a, a, a wide range of uh, reactions. I think some people are happy that um, the, the two um, conservative-oriented parties uh, are working together. And uh, some, uh, I think, have, have some concerns that um, uh, maybe some of the people who made those changes have not gone through a full process, mm -hmm. a fulsome process. So uh, I think um, at some point, the, the public would have the opportunity to have their say, mm -hmm. right? Uh, of course. Uh, whenever the, the next provincial election is called, then mm -hmm. people would have their say. On to the next elections. Uh, when do you think uh, Premier is going to call for next election? <laughs> I have no way to, uh, to predict, but uh, like many of my colleagues, uh, I, I, uh, I start preparing. <laughs> right, good. And, uh, Congratulations uh, on your acclaimed nominations for thank the next you. election. Thank you. And thank you for the support of the people yeah. uh, in Calgary Northern Hills yeah. and uh, from the different communities. So right. I, I appreciate that. Uh, no problem. I think it clearly shows the uh, personality and the work you do for the public and for the, your constituency. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for your time to come into our studio. Yeah, thank you very much for having me and give me this opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, and I hope that I have, a, I have a chance to come back again sometime soon. Sure, anytime. <laughs> thank you. Okay.